I'm going to talk about the potential impact of a citizen-driven air quality measurement project. So what can be achieved in the end through such project is a question that uh, have been asked quite a lot. So I thought it would be interesting to uh, focus on this topic and to try to clarify it as much as possible. So I will start by giving you a uh, situation. So there is a child. He sees his father playing with some sort of electronic device. He has no idea of... Uh, what it is, but he's being curious as any child would be. Um, so he asks, he asks him, uh, what is it you're playing with? So the father explains that it's a device that will help him measure the air quality. And so the child uh, asks him, why do you want to measure air quality and what does it even mean? So this will start an educative, an educative process about the effect of air quality on health and the sources of air pollution. Because we can't see it, we need to be thought uh, about it in order to know it exists. It's valu it, it is valuable for them and for anyone to understand phenomena such as uh, quality and air, uh, and air pollution so they can touch this reality and make decisions in the future uh, knowing what they imply. I find this sensor and the map of uh, air quality people make together an awesome way to interest people and uh, bring them together, make them feel involved uh, and make them aware in the end. It's a good means to teach them how air pollution works and uh, with a scientific approach. So uh, the, f the first big point I'm going to talk about is uh, I'm talking about is awareness. So I gave the example of a child, but this is uh, applicable to anyone. Uh, this awareness is critical to improve the capacity of people to address environmental issues. In short, people need to uh, know how air quality works and why it matters, so they will be able to take the good decisions. So after you know how air pollution works and uh, why it matters, you need to understand it for a specific time and place, which brings me to understand the current situation. Um, so it's important to understand uh, the pollution, uh, how it's concentra concentrated, how it occurs, um, and the different trends uh, to take action and fight it efficiently. Um, personally, but also uh, on a national level with efficient policies. Uh, it's also hard uh, to take position personally when you have no idea of what the current situation is uh, nearby your home. So uh, the process would look like this. Um, first, we measure the air quality, also called data collection. Uh, you can call it however you want. Um, this helps us understanding the current situation in a specific uh, time and place. And this uh, understanding can help us taking efficient action, whether they are uh, personal or uh, uh, national, on a personal or national level. Um, and before the data collection on the left, there is uh, awareness indication, uh, which I just talked about earlier. Um, I will end with an example uh, that illustrates really well the potential impact uh, of such a project. It happened with real achievements uh, in Australia. Um, so an independent agency uh, of the federal government called CSIRO gathered schools and citizens uh, to collect marine debris around uh, Australia's coastline. Um, so here is the map of the, uh, the site they covered. So the idea was that uh, they went to, uh, to schools and taught uh, teachers how to uh, collect uh, the data in an efficient way and how to uh, teach the children of the classes how to, uh, how to, do, it, uh, how to do it well. Um, so they went on those sites and uh, collected the trash and uh, counted them and classified them into different ranges, whether it's metal, uh, plastics, organics, and so on. And uh, the results were really good. They discovered that the uh, quality of the data collection were as good, uh, so the one done by uh, citizen scientists were as good as the ones done by researchers. Um, yeah. So they managed to achieve four things through uh, this program. The first one is the promotion of science education and learning. Um, so by incorporating scientific courses and approaches before the data collection process. Uh, the second one was the creation of awareness about the effects of uh, nature uh, of human and non-human debris on the coastlines. Uh, the, third, the third one was uh, the collection uh, of a huge amount of data without compromising the quality of uh, this one. 
and uh, with very uh, very few cost because every uh, citizen scientist was uh, doing it for free. Uh, to come back with what was just said earlier, I think it's really important to work in complementarity with uh, the public uh, data uh, in order to uh, to be efficient and not uh, trying to oppose each other. Um, and so. Thanks to this data collection, they were able to take efficient decisions on uh, where to do prevention of uh, uh, debris and trashes, uh, whether it's uh, from humans uh, or non-humans. In conclusion, I think that those achievements can, uh, can be reached through uh, this uh, citizen-driven air quality measurement uh, program. Um, so first, the promotion of science, education, and uh, learning is, uh, as I talked about, uh, as I talked about at the beginning, um, it's a really interesting way to bring uh, the interest of people and teach them about how air uh, pollution works uh, in general, or for our health, or on a global scale. Uh, on Wednesday, there was also a uh, civic atelier where people learned how to collect data and how to analyze data in an efficient way. It's another example of uh, the promotion of science and, uh, and, uh, and, yeah, and critical thinking in general. So the creation of awareness, uh, I yeah, talked about uh, it at the beginning. So when you know uh, how air pollution works, I think it's pretty obvious that you understand why it's important to care. And uh, so collecting more data can be done thanks to the citizen-driven approach, and um, this wouldn't be possible uh, with uh, so many citizens coming together around this project. And so with all this data, we would be able on a personal level and on a national level to take efficient uh, decisions to improve in the end the way we, uh, we live and the air we breathe. So I will let you on a quote from uh, Peter Drucker, the, fa the, the father of, uh, uh, of uh, modern management that said, what gets measured gets managed. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.